You can be anywhere else tonight, but you chose to come here to further your understanding of how America can meet the rising demand for public EV charging. My name is Camille Christina Terry. I am the co-founder and CEO of Charger Help, as well as the co-chair for WCS Los Angeles. And I am so excited to welcome you to our virtual happy hour. Next slide, please. So today we um, have arrivals and introductions. We're gonna go over a little bit of the Zoom etiquette, housekeeping. I feel like we've spent a lot of time on Zoom, but I'll definitely do a reminder. Um, we'll have our speaker presentation then we'll go into a breakout session and we'll regroup. We'll do a share out and then we'll have our second breakout session. We'll regroup, share out again, and then we'll wrap it up. Next slide, please. And so before we start a little bit about WCS, if you're not familiar, Women in Clean Tech and Sustainability um, is really here to foster an influential network of professionals to further the role of women in the growing green economy and making a positive impact on the environment. So we have monthly in person once we're out of COVID, but currently lots of virtual events. Uh, we have an annual mentorship program, and then we also host a TED style conference with Google. And here's just a little snippet of some of our upcoming events that you may want to um, put on your radar. So we have another virtual happy hour coming up with Clean Power Alliance. We have a really um, cool speed virtual uh, mentorship that I'm actually pretty excited about. And something else to think about um, attending is that we have a think and a negotiate like a CEO, which is gonna be a three part series um, that we'll be hosting as well. And if you're not already familiar with um, the events, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter and we'll be sending out more information. All right, Zoom room etiquette. So please remember to unmute and mute yourself appropriately. Uh, share your video if you can. The whole point of this is for us to have a great virtual experience. And um, make sure you write your full name. I know I share a Zoom account, so sometimes I have to remember to change back my name. So put your full name and share your LinkedIn profile. Um, we really want to stay connected with each of you and make sure that great connections are made. All righty. So first, I would like to introduce to you um, our co-host of Marin Energy and Transportation Group which is dedicated to working professionals operating at the nexus of energy and transportation. They're based in Northern California. They arrange networking events generally in Marin County, encourage knowledge sharing and camaraderie. And they're actually um, gonna be presenting our main speaker tonight. So our first speaker started his career in telecommunication sector as a product manager managing B2B services for a major European player in Switzerland and the UK. In 2012, he created an EV charging platform for a consortium of utilities, resulting in the largest EV charging network of Switzerland with 10 utilities managing more than 1,000 charging, charging stations. After some e-mobility consulting activities in Germany and the Netherlands, he moved to the United States with a mission to enable any company to enter into the growing EV charging market. And without further ado, I would like to welcome our speaker, founder and CEO of SAS Charge, Richard Albert. Thanks, Kamal, for this intro. Uh, well, very happy to be here today, uh, here in this session, and in 2020, speaking of uh, electric vehicles. Um, we went from, we are doing something good for climate change, to let's develop the market, it's happening now. And here is why, next slide, please. Well, first, uh, from a technological point of view, uh, we are there. Uh, charging equipment are capable to provide way more power than needed. Cars are almost there, but next slide, please. The reality is a little different. Uh, there is around 1 million plus cars in the US. That's roughly 1% of EVs uh, in the US. And 40% of these EVs are actually in California. And despite um, large subsidies, there is only 25,000 public EV chargers in the US. So let's imagine if uh, a Walmart uh, with um, 5,000 sites, um, McDonald's with uh, 14,000 sites, and Starbucks would just add one charging station per site we would have, we would double the number of charging stations in the US. 
But well, situation is that uh, prices are, are, are too expensive for EV charging. And there is a really problem of lack of competition. Ne next slide. So what can we do to make it sustainable and more profitable? Well, first off, let's open up EV charging networks. So today you need around five subscription of different providers to drive across the country. Uh, it's possible to use uh, any ATM with one debit card. Uh, so should be also possible with EV uh, cars. Um, we definitely should have the possibility to charge at any charging station anywhere with one, one subscription. And that's also better for um, the investor of these chargers. More charging transaction, more, um, more possibilities to amortize these chargers. Next slide. But let's be practical. Uh, the charging station investments uh, have to be adapted to the nature of the business. Uh, if I'm a hotel owner, um, I prefer to have 100 level two charger for $1,200 instead of one fast charger for 100 clients. If I'm traveling across the country, I'll be, however, very happy to charge my car in 15 minutes and continue my, 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 my trip. Well, speaking of, next slide, please. Well, where are these chargers? And why shall I, why, why shall I stop there? All charger can be seen and operated with one charging uh, smartphone application. Well, actually, that's where it starts to be interesting for Starbucks and other retailers such as Walmart or McDonald's. Uh, charging service is clearly a, serve, a reason for retailer to get us at their location to consume while charging. We have to know that charging a car takes from 10 minutes to two hours, depending on the type of chargers and um, the type of cars. Um, so basically, they have a reason to send us targeted promotion to attract us to their location. Next slide. And that leads us to the most important point, the business model, which is also a new way for large retailers to engage with consumers. While the client is charging, he can consume his latte macchiato that has been pre pre promoted in the previous slide. And well, driver is paying for the charging service and Starbucks can compensate it for it. That's also a new revenue streams for the retailer. Next slide. Well, this approach goes along with the future of charging. The way we see it, we see a fragmented decentralized market uh, with retailers of user moving in these sectors. They have the location, they have the parking spaces and products to sell while charging. Um, I mean, Costco is doing it for gas station very successfully. Why not with EVs? Then we have utilities. Um, they're clearly switching gears and offering EV charging services hopefully directly instead of partnering uh, as it happens uh, uh, today. And that's actually the case in Europe for in the last five years, they moved in this sector heavily. In the middle, we have this, what we call e-rooming. It's connecting EV drivers with charging station networks. There are a couple of fun companies in this field, but we can well imagine Visa and MasterCard moving in this field. They, they, they offer a service as a hub in the financial sector between your bank and the financial banks. Last but not least, the car manufacturers. Um, they sell directly the product to the consumer. They are the first person that you're gonna meet when you buy an EV. And they have appetite to move in this sector. Tesla is doing that already. So basically, to move in this sector, anyone, any companies can move there. They need two things. They need charging station hardware and system to operate the service. Next slide. Thankfully, 
Well, we provide such kind of system as SAS Charge with, uh, well, it says tool sets of cloud-based application that enables, well, anyone to create an EV charging station network and commercialize charging services for EV drivers. Next slide. Retailers or utilities, well, they can create their own business model with their own identity uh, to manage either private homes, for example, company fleets, or public sites, such as uh, Walmart or McDonald's can do. So it's really from home to anywhere. Next slide. So let's conclude with this question. What kind of market do you believe in? A close limited to a few players, as it is in telecommunication, or an open and highly competitive market, as it is in the financial sector? Remember, there is no legislation or severe legislation to start providing EV charging services. Well, on these notes, um, Next slide. Well, I'm more than happy to answer all your questions here or offline. Please, um, you, you, you can find easily my LinkedIn um, and uh, my, my Twitter feed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Richard. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna go ahead and break off. I'm oh, sorry, you can go back one. We're gonna go ahead and break out into our breakout sessions. The first breakout question is, what do you see as the most exciting aspect of having public EV charging stations. So you'll be in your breakout session for a few moments and then you'll come back, share out, and then we have another question after that. Hi all, is this our breakout session? Sorry, no, one Let's moment. <laughs> one moment, sorry. <laughs> So Neha, you should be in breakout room three. Do you see um, a, a join window anywhere? No, Abigail, I was just wondering if should, I should stop sharing it this first. Yeah, I wonder if that's it. And then I think I'll be able to see, yeah, I'm now able to see that. Okay, okay, great. When we are back, then I have to start sharing again and uh, don't have to play music, right? Correct, correct. Great, thank you, thanks. thanks. Hey, Elizabeth, can you hear me? Elizabeth, can you hear me? Hey, Neha, you want to get your screen share going again? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that really quick. Uh, okay, um, share screen. Um, okay, there we go. Everyone, welcome back. Hello. Hello. 
Hope you enjoyed your breakout room discussion. Yeah, it was good. We, awesome. we, we um, oh, we got someone in the waiting room. Let's see here. I guess let me know when they're all back, Abigail. Yeah, just about 30 more seconds for folks to join and then we'll do a quick little debrief. Okay, cool. Robert, I really prefer you not to sit there. Robert, is there somewhere else you can sit? No. We had pretty small uh, breakout uh, rooms this time. We had like three. All right, sounds like we have a form now. Camille, you wanna kick us off? Sure, thank you so much, Abigail. All righty, um, we would love to hear um, some of the things that you all discussed in your group. Uh, I'm gonna say like raise a hand and I'm gonna try to see, or you could just start talking. Oh, I see a hand, here we go. Aura, Yeah. you had to share? Yeah, thanks, Camille. So uh, in our group was Gayathri, John, and Bettina. And it was really interesting. So we started off talking about the limitations currently um, where a lot of people power at home. So it tends to limit the um, utility of EVs to people who have a home or a designated parking lot with power. Um, so there'll be greater appeal when there's more public charging. And then uh, that was from John and Gayathri added in just building on that of thinking about the ability to combine the decentralized charging with decentralized power generation. Um, you know, those abilities to um, really have more uh, peak power from renewables and have that distributed. Uh, Bettina added in about the consumer behavior. So what will people be doing during that period of charging? And so uh, you could have your latte, but what else could you be doing and how will, what other services will be layered on top of um, that EV charging services that are tailored to having 10 minutes, you know, or, or a so of time, um, you know, and then we just thought a little bit further about the ability to have pricing auctions, search pricing, special offers, um, you know, and just being able to use all of this distributed storage of encouraging people to fill up their batteries at uh, during peak um, generation time for renewables and discharge it at night and things like that. That's, so yeah, it was a, a lot. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Yes, tons to be wow. excited about. Thank you. I think um, Abigail, do you have um, opportunity for one more share out? Yeah, a few more. Okay. Oh, Plenty. a few more. Okay, great. Oh, All right. Um, so like our our next? team our. I will go. Um, our team was we're, we're talking about just reducing the range anxiety. Um, that's a real thing. And we had also talked or I had shared about how I thought it would be interesting if gas stations actually if we were able to use their infrastructure to add uh, charging stations just because, you know, there's if, if we were to use their infrastructure and add EV stations and that would alleviate some of the uh, range anxiety and maybe encourage people that were not interested in EV, get interested in them? Hmm. No, just, those are really good points. Just, oh, go just as, a, as, a, as a quick uh, comment on that, I know that uh, Travel America was, um, I think it's Travel America, was announcing that they plan to put EV charging stations at, their, at a lot of their travel sites. Hmm. So they're, they're already thinking about that at least for interstate kind of travel. Right, no, that's a great point. Anybody else has something that, um, that wasn't shared, a, a new thing that you're excited about that your Greek spoke on? Well, we were also talking about how, um, you know, what, what type of companies might pick up. And I guess it's not like, like, it's not necessarily like exciting, but it's just interesting to think about what companies might pick up um, putting charging at all of their um, different locations and the social stratification that could possibly happen from it. Costco is a uniter of all classes. No matter who you are, you love Costco. But, um, you know, the same person isn't going to go to a, a Walmart that's going to go to a Whole Foods. And the type of people that have a charger are probably at a Whole Foods. So is this going to start maybe stratifying, you know, different classes in a different way? But also if we're putting chargers at gas stations, everyone has to go to a gas station, you're gonna start choosing the gas station that has the 
best entertainment. Because even if it's a rapid charger and you have to sit around for 20, 30 minutes, you still have to sit around for 20, 30 minutes. What are you going to do there? How is this gas station going to change and conform to make it interesting enough for you to want to stop there? And, and maybe less creepy because yeah. gas stations tend to be a little bit of a, not a great place. Just to have a cleaner bathrooms. Just definitely have cleaner bathrooms. Maybe that will draw people to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. All right, let's do one more share out. Um, do you have anyone oh. else that would like to? Yeah, picking, I'll piggybacking off of what Sarah mentioned earlier about range anxiety. We touched on that and how, you know, it would be great to see extended battery life. Um, you know, when you're stuck in traffic and you're not really sure where that charging station is. And that kind of led us into discussing, you know, what could be done with technology and, you know, could there be an app um, that, you know, shows you, you go onto the app and plug in where you are and then it'll show you all the, you know, nearby charging stations. No, I think that's a great point. And the one thing that I thought was interesting from our team that we brought up um, was just like how, like the cost, like what are we going to do like a level twos or is it DC fast chargers? And then even when you go into like installing DC fast chargers in some spaces, like just from um, where there's already existing cold violations and they have to like fix things before they get the charger and what they pay for that. So while a lot of things feel very exciting, we've also found out there was a little bit of barriers um, that we spoke about in our group. So yeah. All right, we're going to go into breakout session two. Um, in this breakout session, we are speaking about how do you think public EV charging stations could reshape the way we travel or reshape our daily commute? All right. Awesome. Enjoy your breakout session. See you in a few minutes. Kenji, can you hear me? Welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your discussion. Yeah, it was great. Awesome. Just give it a little bit longer and then we'll do a debrief. We're back. Oh, yeah. I enjoy the teleporting. I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> like, buckle in. People say that. <laughs> All righty, Camille, the floor is yours. Yay. All right, let's get some new people. If you haven't spoken, please speak up. We would love to hear um, things that you spoke about in your group. You can just speak. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Carolyn here. Um, Carolyn. We started off in our group actually talking about that we hope that there won't be a big disruption to daily life and commute. Um, and it'll just be natural. Um, yeah. And maybe there will be benefits even on the travel aspect, um, you know, making, making the trip back home from Northern California to Southern California easier. Um, but we also talked well, easier in a sense that you'd stop anyways and then you just fuel up you don't have to take a plane it's less polluting and you don't have to you save money because it's cheaper if you use electricity but we also talked about the kind of disparities between like who can afford home charging and who who cannot and um, and also complexities around just finding the right charger that fits within your network. So something that fits very well in the roaming topic that Richard um, discussed earlier, um, that you make sure you have the right charger, the right card, the right access. Um, and and hope we hope that that gets easier in the, in the future. No, that's a great point and a great way to uh, flip that question. Thank you for that. All right, who wants to share next? This is Lisa Ann on, on that topic of, of travel. Yeah, people are always going to be commuting. I don't think we're ever going to get away from that. We talked a little bit about uh, road trips 
and and you know use of public charging on road trips and something interesting that came about was the conversation around um uh will you even pay for charging in in on public roadways or or will you get reimbursed if you buy a burger scan a qr code and then you can get reimbursed from your receipt or um maybe tourist traps will figure out that if they install ev chargers you know they'll get more people to come you know to take a look at whatever attraction they're advertising I'll subsidize with all that that, that yeah. actually came up real briefly in our group um, about the idea that um, places like Old Route 66, where there was more to do, um, might benefit from the idea that people actually had to stop and charge for half an hour or so rather than, you know, pulling into a gas station for five minutes that, you know, it, it might lead to, you know, a little bit of a change on that sort of thing for interstate trips. Mm. That's a great point. Does anyone else have uh, anything that's a little different? Actually, I'm going to jump in here. So sure. I was in a group with Neha and uh, Amy. And one of the things that we talked about was how uh, a technology is going to change how long we'll be charging. If you think about how quickly mobile phones are charging now compared to earlier. And Neha brought up that point, which really makes sense. So maybe we will see the change in behavior and maybe we won't. And the other thing that our group talked about was how uh, public transit and having public uh, EV charging points that could overlap with uh, electric trucks and electric buses could also transform the way in which we're going to be commuting. So who knows, we may all be jumping on an electric bus. Who knows? All right. Oh, Ashley, did you want to go? Was that your hand for? No. Oh, no, that was just my fingers crossed that we can all write. Oh. <laughs> cool. Um, anyone else would like to share? This is Ora. Um, in our group, we we're also talking about some of the apps that are there now. Um, Paul uses ChargeMap, where you can plug in your route and where you're going, and just looking how those services will be built out. Um, you know, and tied into other services to understand what you're trying to get done and your preferences and, and route you appropriately and do load balancing and things like that. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, oh, Brian, do you want to share from our group? I feel like we had some cool points. Yeah, you know, um, it's interesting, um, you know, Jessica Aldis, who, who works for, for Oracle and Opower is like kind of, it's interesting, she, she works, uh, it sounds like a lot um, on the kind of customer experience as it relates to utilities. Um, and, and, and so I think kind of the key takeaway from our breakout was this is a huge opportunity um, to shape what the customer experience is going to be like um, with electric vehicle charging. And the fact that electrons, uh, you know, you can put in EV charging anywhere the grid flows, anywhere there are electrons um, means that Again, retailers and, and you know, Richard and I are talking with very large retailers who are very keenly interested in this and want to make sure there's a profitable business model behind it. So there's an opportunity, I think, to um, significantly improve the customer experience from the way EV charging is now and definitely over the gas station experience by far. Um, and, 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 you know, that should... One, I don't think it, sh it, it could change the way we travel in a way that is maybe more beneficial and better for us because we can get more done and, you know, get the shopping done or things that we want to do uh, in a way. And it's just, um, it also shows the complexity of the business model around EV charging. No, I, I really like that. And I think one of the things we talked about a lot is just like, it's really what we can do with technology right now and like really as an industry being innovative, right? Like creating things that like fascinate people that gets people engaged, I think is really going to help with like mass EV adoption. And that's, that's what makes me really excited. It's like, it's a whole new world. It's literally whatever we want it to be. Um, and it's important, yeah, to have all these voices a part of that conversation for us to think about those things, about ways that we can help um, impact the movement. John, I'll end with you and then we can wrap up. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to ask if, if anybody has any thoughts about the fact that because EVs are kind of inherently cleaner, um, you're not dealing with the situation in a gas station where you've got to deal with 
uh, pollution coming in, the, the poor air quality. Um, you actually have the ability to make the recharging versus refueling experience much, uh, just mu much more pleasant in a way that gas stations are just kind of inherently limited because you know, cars are always going to be spewing exhaust and diesel and all the things that um, go along with that. I just, does anybody have any thoughts about that? What kind of difference that's going to make? Yeah, I kicked that off in our group just saying that I don't believe that we would be able to kind of permit gas stations if we were starting to tell people that we're going to dump something out of a hose. Right. <laughs> train that's highly explosive and causes cancer into our mm -hmm. vehicles. Um, I, yeah, I think I think this is like um, our grandchildren will will ask us, "Did you guys really do this? That's very <laughs> dangerous and unhealthy." Yeah, Thank one. You, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, one right, of my well, former uh, colleagues akined it to um, how we kind of perceive burning. Um, whale, you know, kind of whale oil for for energy. So hopefully we'll get there. Yes, thanks you, Julie. Um, so we have one question in the chat. Um, do you want me to go ahead and ask that? Uh, yeah, okay. I'll go ahead and ask the question that's in the chat. Um, it's from Aura. It says, "What time frames?" And I believe this is probably for the speaker. Um, what time frames? are predicted for that single ubiquitous network where you don't need different cards for different networks. What are the key barriers? And I believe this would be for um, our speaker. Richard. Well, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would love to answer that. Uh, well, to answer uh, this question, well, this is happening in Europe already. That's the case. I mean, it's not possible to have an isolated network. Um, in the US, it has been a little slower, but um, there, there are some open protocol enabling to interconnect larger networks together. So for me, it's just a matter of time. Uh, 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 it's, it's very easy to enter into this market. Uh, there are roaming platforms which do exist already, which are in the US to interconnect uh, different networks together. So from my point of view, in the next, I'm optimistic in the next two or three years maximum, it's going to be very normal to interconnect all the networks in the same way it is in the banking sector. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, uh, it's ludicrous to imagine the, 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 uh, to imagine this not happening. And one of the other reasons as well are, are the utilities on itself. They have a reason. They've been testing charging station with different provider partnering, and they're going to enter into this market. And they know that this technology does exist. Uh, Duke Energy uh, uh, represents, they have around, um, well, consumer base, which is almost the state of, of, of Florida, North Carolina. Uh, if tomorrow they would like to set up the network, it's going to be very hard for anyone to say, well, I don't want to interconnect my network with you. And it's not only a matter of big provider connecting together, uh, they have an interest that a lot of smaller networks are there. And that's what we are encouraging. And that's the direction where we're going. But thankfully, I'm not a lone warrior there. There's a lot of provider which have the same interests today. Uh, open protocols being harsh, um, heavily adopted in the US, OCPP, OCPI, it's a protocol to interconnect networks together. That's a rooming uh, protocol, and there are hubs coming up as well. And one of the, the, the last push, that's why I'm saying in the next two or three years, our car manufacturer, uh, they have the consumer at the source, and uh, they just want to get access on the networks. They're not going to start to install uh, uh, thousands of chargers but they want to get access to the charger. So if Walmart moves tomorrow and say, well, we're going to cover 5,000 stores, anyone is going to have to access, access to this network. And here you go, you have your rooming. So two or three years, I say two years. Thank you, Richard. Okay, um, we can take one more question and then we will wrap up.
Okay, I do not see any more questions. Um, yeah, so with that, I just want to remind everyone of our, well, number one, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Marin, uh, for, for um, partnering with us. This was, I, I had a lot of fun. I can talk about EVs literally like all of the time. So this was very fun for me. Um, but with that, our upcoming events, just you know, be out the, on the lookout. Sign up for the newsletter so that way you can get up to date. And if you're in Los Angeles, we are currently looking for volunteers and members. If you know someone in Los Angeles, um, feel free to reach out and let them know. We're trying to build out our cohort out here as well. Um, and with that, I would just like to thank you all so much for your time. Once again, we know that you could have literally been anywhere. So we appreciate you dedicating time to engage in this conversation with us. And we really hope you all have a great week and a great weekend. All right. See you. Thank you. Thanks, you're welcome. Well, Thanks so much. Everyone, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Good to meet y'all. Great job, Camille. Thanks. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Camille. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. That's great. <laughs>